Hi, St. John's. Um, for today's devotional, we're going to be looking at Matthew 21, verses 33 through 43. So this parable is actually the second of two parables um, that Jesus was using in, when he was, he was teaching in the temple. And it's actually an answer to um, the chief priests and elders who were challenging his teaching authority. So he's, he's talking to them and they're answering him back. As we read, think about the cast of characters in this parable. There's the landowner, who's God, the farmers, who, um, like, they're the chief priests and the elders, the servants, so maybe these are God's prophets, um, and the landowner's son, who you'll be able to tell pretty easily that that is Jesus. So here it is, Matthew 21, verses 33 through 43. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. He leased it to tenant farmers and went away. When the time came to harvest fruit, he sent his servants to the farmers to collect his fruit. The farmers took his servants, beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first group, and they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenant farmers saw his son, they said to each other, this is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those farmers? He will completely destroy those terrible men, they told him and lease his vineyard to other farmers who will give him his fruit at the harvest. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is what the Lord has done and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruit. The thing that's most striking to me about this teaching is how the chief priests and elders miss the entire point. As we move toward Holy Week and Easter, we know how the story ends, and we see foreshadowing of this ending earlier in the chapter, where these religious people are being hesitant to agree with Jesus' teachings because they were worried about getting called out on their inconsistencies, and they were afraid of the crowd. Jesus himself, in the flesh, is telling these people that they aren't doing what they should be in building the kingdom of God. He predicts his own death. Jesus is even telling him that he, as the rejected stone, will become the cornerstone of this kingdom movement. And he even quotes their own scripture at them in verse 42. Ultimately here, we see that God doesn't withhold crucial information from us. We just have to be perceptive of what he's saying. This challenged me to think, what is it that God is saying loud and clear that I'm just missing? Am I afraid of the crowd or could I be too wrapped up in my own pride or distraction to give the teaching of Jesus the thought that it deserves? May we never miss what God is telling us so obviously. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your teaching is all that we need. In this season of Lent, we pray that you would help us quiet our pride, decrease the frills of our day, and step away from our commitments to things other than you to refresh our desire to listen with our whole hearts and deeply understand the gravity of what you gave for us in your son. Walk with us throughout this day and open our eyes, ears, and hearts to the messages we may be missing. In Jesus' name, amen.